In this video, we'll talk about how changing units and dimensions can cause you to shift or scale a function's graph. Okay? So functions are called, they describe the, they describe different relations, relationships between measurements in your system. Okay? So because they're describing how one measurement is related to another, they necessarily have dimensions of both their inputs and outputs. Okay, so your input of your function maps to your output, and then your input has some sort of unit switch, right? So maybe you're measuring it in feet or inches, and then that's, you know, the radius or sphere, and then the function then maps the radius to the volume, so it maps it to a different unit, dif different dimension. Okay, so whenever you're thinking about functions, you can separate out, you know, the dimensions and units of the input from the dimensions and units of the output. And a function is mapping, you know, different sorts of units, other sorts. Of units. They could be of the same dimension when you're converting between units of the same dimension, or they could be a different dimension. So like the radius to the sphere, kind of example. Okay. So so you know, back to that radius and sphere example. You know, we had, you know, we started with the radius, r, in centimeters. And then our first function, right, remember we mapped it to the volume, C, which was in centimeters cubed, right? So in that case, our function was f of r was 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? So that took a input, which had units of centimeters, and dimensions of distance, and it mapped it to volume, which has units of centimeters cubed and dimensions volume. Okay, and then if you recall, this was for, uh, we had the density, so then we also multiplied the, by the density to find the mass of that sphere of water. We did another map, take the volume to get the mass, right? So that was mass m, which we measured in grams, right? And in that case, our function was of volume, which was equal to 13.58 grams per centimeter cubed times volume. Okay. So then you could think about, you know, each function takes an input and its associated units and maps it to an output with a different set of units. And so when we have two of these, we can think about the composition, right, f of g, right? And in that case, right, this would be g of f, because we apply f and then we apply g. So in this case, we would say, okay, we map straight from the radius mass by applying g to the function of R, right? So G is applied to volumes, and F already spits out a volume. Okay, so we're allowed to do composition as long as the input dimensions and units of G matches the output dimensions and units. So in this case, they both share volume. Volume is the output of F and is the input of G, so we're able to compose it in this direction. Right, so if we compose this, we'll get, you know, 13.58 grams per cubed times four thirds pi r cubed, where r is measured in centimeters, and then those will cancel up and give a gram, just like we saw in the last. Okay, but what we can't do, you know, technically we could write it down, but the units wouldn't add up. We can't think about g f applied to g of v, right? Because in this case, you know, the input and output units and dimensions don't make sense, right? You can't ask what the volume is of something that doesn't have a volume, right? If you apply g to v, you get a mass, so then you can't apply this uh, volume function. It doesn't make sense anymore. So when you're composing functions, you have to be careful about the order in which you compose them to make sure that they match up with the units and dimensions that you're working with. Okay? So let's say um, we have a different function with set inputs and output dimensions, fixed input units, and output units. Okay, let's do an example. Let's say we have, you know, we're measuring, we have a function for the weight of a tree 
is a function of its height. Okay, well, let's say that works like this. Let's say that uh, the input is function of its height will be measured in meters, and the output weight will be in grams. Okay, so let's say that our function looked like this. W of h is equal to uh, h squared plus u. Okay, so h will be in meters, and there's some, some scaling factor here uh, to get rid of the units to make a match up. And h squared plus 2 is our function that determines the weight of a tree in terms of the height. Okay, so then let's see. Let me move this. Here. Okay, so where to plot this? Right, we have our height in meters, we have our weight in grams. So at zero meters tall, this thing weighs two grams. And then you know at one meter, it should be one squared plus two, so three grams, and so on. So it's gonna, it's gonna look like a parabola like this. This is our function. Okay, this is w. So what happens if we change the units? What happens if we change the units of our input or output? What happens to our function? Okay. Let's start with, you know, maybe one of these questions. Let's say, let's just say we change the units of output first, right? So let's say we change units of output. Okay, and if we're changing the units of output between units of the same dimension that share a common zero, then what this does is this is gonna scale the vertical axis of our function, okay? The units with the same zero, but different scales, then we get a scaling scale the graph vertically. Okay. Let's go back to our example. Okay, so let's say we change our units from grams up to kilograms. And maybe over here we'll change it from grams down to milligrams. Okay? So recall that you know 1000 grams is equal to one kilogram. So if we were to write our function out again, this would be W of H, which was H squared plus two, and this was in uh, grams. So if we want to put this in kilograms, we have to divide by a thousand. Right? So now our new function is w of h is h squared plus two divided by a thousand. Right now this is in kilograms. Okay, so our, our x-axis is the same, this is still height measured meters, but now our weight, which is in kilograms, is going to be uh, shrunk. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll put the baseline here. So this was weight in grams, height in meters, and we had, it looked like that, right? Parabola. Starting at two, going through two, three, one, and went up like that. Right, that's what it was originally. And now we're going to shift the vertical axis by a thousand, or scale it by a thousand. So now instead of being at two, this will be when h is zero. This is now two over a thousand, right? Or two times ten to the minus three, right? And three times ten to the minus three, when h is equal to one, that's a three on top, so then it's three over a thousand. So it looks very similar, but the vertical axis is much smaller, right? These are much smaller numbers than those two. And so it looks pretty much the same, but uh, you know, if we were to extend this, if we were to plot these on the same axes, you wouldn't be able to see anything at one because these numbers are so much smaller, right? They're way down here, okay? And then if we make the units of output smaller, right? Now we have one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So our function now becomes 
h squared plus 2 times 1,000. Okay, and that'll be in milligrams. Okay, so for every gram that we had originally, now we'll have 1,000 milligrams. So multiply the output by 1,000. Now it looks the same. For the height still in meters, now the weight is going to be in milligrams. And so instead of shrinking this axis, scaling this axis vertically, you know, shrinking it down, we're going to scale it up. So now when h is 0, this is 2 times 1,000. So this is 2,000. And this here would be 3,000. Okay, so it looks very similar, but the vertical axis is bigger, right? These are bigger numbers. So if we were to plot it on the same graph here, they'd be like way up there. You wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, so, you know, just to refresh, when we change the units of output, output, two units with the same zero, so, um, you know, grams and kilograms, zero grams is the same as zero kilograms, is the same as zero milligrams. That's what it means to have the same zero. So when that's true, and all you've done is kind of change the scale, you're just going to scale the graph vertically, right? You're just going to scale the vertical axis. Okay. So now what happens if we are going to do the same thing, but now we're going to change the input. Okay. What happens? If we change input units, again, to units with the same zero, well, instead of scaling the vertical axis, we're going to scale the horizontal axis. OK, so if we do the same example, right, we have our uh, weight, the function of height was h squared plus 2, h was in meters, Weight was in grams. And let's say we change from meters up to kilometers. Keep this one the same and change this one from meters down to centimeters, let's say. Okay, so in that case, if we look at our function, right? One meter is a thousand kilometers. So our function which was W of H, where H was measured in meters. Um, so then for every meter, you know, if we're changing H to kilometers, then, that, then that's a thousand meters, right? So we have 1,000 meters equal to one kilometer. So H was in meters, so now it'll be in kilometers, so we'll replace that with a thousand squared plus two, right? Let me maybe move this up. Lower. All of that down so that I can put h in terms of kilometers here, right? And then instead of this being one, this will be one times ten to the minus three. So when h is one times ten to the minus three, that's the same as when h was one before, and this will be a one here plus two gives us that three. And when h is zero, this is still at two. So the Vertical axis hasn't changed, it's just a weight in the grams, but we've shifted horizontally. Okay, so this used to be a 1, and 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is like way closer here. So this is the original 1, h in meters, weight in grams, 2, 3. The function looked like that. And 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is like way over here. Like it's a really small number. Okay, and so we've kind of shifted this whole thing horizontally, like squished it down into this region. And then if we do the opposite, right, we make the meters into centimeters. We have one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. That tells us now that our new function would be h over 100 squared 2. Okay, so for every 100 centimeters, that equals one meter, so that's the function of 4 squared plus 2. And this is weight in grams, 3. And then now instead of a 1 here, this will be 100. This is h in centimeters. Okay, so now we've done the opposite. Now we've uh, horizontally scaled it outwards. So if we were to put them all on the same graph, this one would be way over here. It's going to shrunk up like that. And if we were to put this one on the same axis, it'd be way over there. Kind of lengthened out. Okay. 
So now what happens when we change our inputs to different units that have different zeros? Okay, we change, or sorry, change our output units. Sorry. To a unit with a different zero. Okay, so classic example of this is changing from degrees Celsius to Kelvins, right? So zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius is equal to you know, 273.15 Kelvin. Okay, so if we had some function, Let's say our function was um, temperature of a snake after eating a mouse of mass m. Let's say we had let's say we had this function t of m equals m plus zero point m, where this is the temperature of a snake. Celsius after eating a mouse of mass m in grams, let's say. Okay, so then if we were to convert this to Kelvin, right, then if we were to make our temperatures in Kelvin, we have to add 273.15, right? So T of m Kelvin is then 10 plus 0 0.6 m plus 273.15. Okay, and that shifts it from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, so if this was our original function, degrees Celsius, uh, temperature in degrees Celsius, mass in grams, and then this would be temperature in Kelvin, grams, then while this one starts at 10, when the mass is zero, goes up with slope 0.6. Okay, this is 285. This one starts at 283.15, and then goes up with the same slope. Okay, these two have same slope, but they start at different y values. Okay, so this is a vertical shift. Okay, so then what happens if we have, you know, not just a unit with a different zero, but maybe a unit with a different zero and a different zero? Okay, so let's say we change output units units of different scale and zero. Right, and so for this classic example is degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Right, and the formula there is, you know, zero degrees Celsius times nine fifths plus 32 is equal to 32 Fahrenheit. Okay, so if we were to take our same function, right, which was P of M degrees Celsius is equal to 10 plus 0 0.6 M. And if we were to change this to degrees Fahrenheit, well then, um, I this real quick. Right, so then, So for here, change it to that, right? So we're going to scale the temperature by nine fifths and then add 32. So it's a scale and a shift, right? So we go from that to temperature of M in Fahrenheit is gonna be same function. This was in degrees Celsius times nine fifths plus 32, right? And that gives us the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So if we were to do this out, that gives us 18 from these two, and then the 0.6 times 9 fifths becomes plus 1.8 times m plus 32. So our function.
function becomes 50 plus 1.08. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so in degrees Celsius, temperature in degrees Celsius. versus temperature Fahrenheit. M is still measured in grams in both of these, right? And we said, okay, it started at 10, and then it called up with slope 0.6. Now it's gonna start at 50, right? 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's gonna go up with an even steeper slope, right? So it's both a vertical, scale and a ship. Okay. Then the last kind of question you can ask is what happens if we change the units of input? Okay. These again. Okay, so if we change the input units. All right, and let's say we're gonna change them from uh, we're going to do a shift and a scale for this. Okay. Let's say that we have uh, this other function. Call it S of T, which describes the speed of a snake as a function of its temperature. Right. So let's say it's four plus zero point one T. Okay. So this would be speed, maybe in meters per second, as a function of the temperature in degrees Celsius of this name. Okay, so then now degrees Celsius, uh, now temperature is the input, speed is the output, so this is seconds, y-axis, and the temperature in degrees Celsius is on the x-axis. Okay, so, you know, when this is just, um, when this is just in degrees Celsius, you okay, at zero degrees Celsius, this will be speed of four, and then it goes up with slope 0.1. Okay, and then let's say we converted this to degrees Fahrenheit again. Two degrees Fahrenheit, right? So then S of T, where T is now going to be measured in Fahrenheit, is going to be uh, four plus 0 0.1, and then this would be a nine fifths T. Plus 32. We have to turn that temperature uh, into from Celsius into Fahrenheit. So if the temperature input, right, so if we have 9 fifths T plus 32 goes from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, then the other way around would be uh, 5 ninths T minus 32. Okay? Great. So then in that case, this function looks like four plus 0.5 over nine T minus three Q. That gives us 1.8 plus 0.5 over T, which is a pretty slow slope. Okay, so now T in degree Fahrenheit is going to be the same thing. S is still meters per second. And then it's going to start at 1.8 instead when uh, degrees Fahrenheit is at zero, since that's much colder than it was before. So it'll be a lower temperature. And then 0.5 over 9 is uh, smaller than 0.1, since 0.1 times 5 nines is 1. So then this will be even slower. Okay, and that's because the Fahrenheit scale, you know, it has more, um, you know, it goes from zero to, you know, boiling temperature of water is like 270 something. Okay, so it's it's a, a lot more spread out. So it's going to spread out the, the, the horizontal axis as well. Okay, so we change the input units like this, where we have both a scaling and a shift, then we get a horizontal Scale. Right, and you might think that 
that this is a vertical scale, but but really we've moved the place where the four intersected. So we've basically taken the line, uh, you know, scaled it so it's flatter, and then we shifted it so that um, where it hits four is actually in a different place. So if a line, a vertical, a vertical shift and a horizontal shift, uh, they don't look very different. Um, but with other types of functions, it'll, it'll be different. Okay. And so I'll stop here for now, and we can do more complicated problems in the next section.